Howdy all of you delicious people, I'm here today to review Artificial Intelligence. So, normally I wouldn't have probably ever have gone on and uh, called a movie this, but I honestly feel like this movie is just lovely. Uh, it's just a really epic movie that, yeah, it is very long and drawn out and, uh, and really... Uh, we can immediately figure out where this is going because like is david just gonna go on and quickly get taken out in some early parts of this movie no um but there is some being uh some beings or some uh robots or some possible people being put at risk at some points in this movie at some points you can almost oddly like I guess out of certain context or something like that, maybe edited cleverly, you can go on and possibly have like artificial intelligence be like presented as a horror film uh, just because it has those kind of beats or it has those kinds of uh, things about it oddly. But so we have within this film a artificial life form or just artificial intelligence that eventually wants to become a real human, a real person. Kind of like Bicentennial Man or really just like uh, any number of like uh, kind of uh, robot-like characters that eventually go on to somehow or another want to like simulate being like a human a lot better or eventually just a robot that eventually goes to be with a family really that's any number of robot movie <laughs> so uh so yeah for this film uh future technology just really won me over uh the visuals of this movie just enjoyable characters so with that said, where can you go on and see Artificial Intelligence currently right now? So, currently it's available on Stars right now. Uh, really, I can say that Stars actually is a pretty decent uh, app to dare in fact download and pay a fee to see any number of their content. Uh, Commando, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, is currently at the second it's recording on there right now. Uh, but there's also a cluster of interesting movies uh, that also is on stars. You can go ahead and check uh, out a show called American Gods that I thoroughly enjoyed, or you can go on and check out the wrestling show that's on there called Heels that has Stephen Amell in it, who, of course, a lot of people probably know from Arrow. Uh, so with that said, let's go on and uh, also say where you can possibly watch this movie for absolutely free. So I've gone on and found a cluster of apps that at the end of the day will say that you can watch this for free. So Google searching. Uh, I would have you go on and Google search an app called Letter C Movies. So that's a letter and then that's a word. And then you could say the word app after. Go on and hopefully Google search this, be able to find this app and be able to watch whatever you like for free, premium access stuff, uh, show exclusive or movie exclusive uh, items of which that would only be uh, having you be able to see it on HBO Max or any number of other things, maybe like uh, Apple TV stuff. So... Also, I can have you Google search a app called Fox HD Movies. Regardless of what the title or, uh, or whatever would tell you, search for those words. Because the logo will say Fox HD Movies, but the title will say Play 1080p HD Movies. Uh, be able to both download those apps and you'll be able to see whatever you like. Uh... You can also go onto a Google Play Store and search the word TV Crush and find an app that has an HD Movies logo with a king crown or just a crown that's off to the side. Download that app and be able to watch 
a number of movies. Not quite sure if it's artificial intelligence, but you'd see a number of movies for absolutely free. So, artificial intelligence, teeing it up. What exactly is this movie about teeing it up wise? So, we have a guy named Professor Hobby that is working with Pryogenics. And he decides that he wants to go on and they kind of have perfected uh, robots uh, to make them more lifelike, to make them more human-like. And so now Professor Hobby wants to go on and have them be able to really love someone. And not only love someone, but then on uh, on top of that, be able to possibly have dreams also. So I'm like, kind of like, wait a minute. This is almost like iRobot. When you kind of look at iRobot and you look at artificial intelligence, almost kind of one and the same. It's kind of weird. Uh, but anyways, so... It seems that cryogenics is to make a bot uh, called David. So David goes out there and is to be sent uh, to this one family. And there's something about like David being sent out there that just kind of feels like the Michael Keaton robot movie or, or robot movie, Robocop movie that uh like there's something about it that just kind of feels very similar where these people are going and trying to pick this specific family that will fit david and so yeah so we have these two parents that eventually are gonna have to say a key number of words to really have david love them and so it seems that at some point in this movie, they go on to say these keywords. And the main reason for these parents going on and wanting David is simply because their son, of course, is to be of poor health. Naturally, assuming that they're probably going to lose their child. Come to find out, they'd be wrong. And so once that kid is to come possibly back in their life one way or another all of a sudden it seems that david is to just be a less than kid uh and eventually they go on and try to get rid of david because they start to question like how safe david really is parts about this movie also kind of feels like before i wake uh, cause if you kind of get the concept of the movie, like before I wake is kind of a much more horror film, but still like the, the concept of the movie is fairly similar and it actually has some really unique parts about that film and I really enjoyed it. So, but yeah, so, uh, and then David goes on some adventures, meeting a lot of, uh, uh, other kind of bots along the way. And he goes on and meets Jude Law's character, Gigolo Joe. <laughs> um, a lot of fun to be had with this movie uh, as far as just kind of these, like, uh, this kid humor, but also, like, adult humor. Especially when we have Gigolo Joe in eventually what is to be Rouge City and having these teen guys in this van uh kind of like really not quite sure if they're gonna get sold all that well uh with rouge city but uh gigolo joe is always a really good seller uh to really get anybody like bedded and, and wedded and whatever so so yeah so and then we also have David at some point chasing this dream of finding this blue fairy, uh, which has something to do with Pinocchio. So let's go on and let's double five this bad boy up because it's about that coveted time to just go into spoiler time. Spoiler time. It's about the time you do spoil this movie.
so Professor Joe, Professor Joe is to be talking with a number of cryogenic people and they are to have Professor Joe stab into this robot and it seems that this robot is to feel pain. So it has like pain receptors. So we have it where this robot is to supposedly feel pain and then Professor Hobby is to go on and open this robot up and is to pull this thing out and is to show these guys the uh, the mechanism that is to kind of uh, like power this robot. And so we have Professor Hobby that's like, well, now that we've kind of gone on and give these given these robots like pain receptors and we've uh, gone on and had like certain like love bots and stuff that has kind of come out where uh people will eventually get some uh some temporary loving if you know what i mean some temporary bedroom business and so professor hobby's like well like what if we went a step further like how about we actually like had a bot that was to Im imprint on to a family and love it forever and it's like well, wait a minute like this robot eventually will <laughs> have that whole entire family die off unless like they consistently keep popping out kids within this family and i guess the bot can just kind of like stay with the family uh for years and years and years and the funny thing is that this bot will, like, never grow old also. So, like, yeah, like, we'll have this bot, like, stay the same age forever. So, they go on and they think, like, okay, that's a really interesting idea. But I think also, like, with how you're kind of looking at, like, products... You would go on and just have a lot of products that are just meant to probably last you probably a good year. And then you would need to replace them. Or you would need to get this DLC or this like season pass or this extra thing that of course is to like upgrade this model as if they need to get software upgrades. Like so... I don't know, like, uh, like, I don't know if exactly you could, like, perfect, uh, something like that, but I don't know, I guess maybe they just had this lofty goal. So, they go on and they put together David, and so... Really, we have Professor Hobby that is just trying to, like, desperately figure out who could be the first client of this. And so we find out that Henry and Monica are to have a kid uh, that is hospitalized, that is, like, things aren't really going well. It feels that at some point they might have to go on and, like, their their son may die. So... All of a sudden, Professor Hobby is to go and give David to Henry. And so Henry, of course, is to bring, Mo uh, bring David to Monica. And so Henry is telling Monica, weirdly, it's like, hey, like, uh, don't be mad and don't kill me. And Monica's like, well, what are you talking about? So Henry all of a sudden is to show David to Monica and so at first Monica has to warm up to David uh, because a lot of times she is very uncomfortable around David like there's some points where David it seems like he's playing around but Monica also gets very annoyed with David to where like Monica is trying to go on and 
uh, like put some things away or to try to clean up. And like David is just kind of in the way. He's kind of like, huh, 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 huh. And so Monica just goes at some point and is like really annoyed with David to the point of just putting him in this closet. And then Monica realizes that's kind of a horrible thing that she did. And so Monica takes David and just puts, like, gives him, like, hey, how about you just go into this room and just play? Just do something. Just be busy. So at one point, we have Monica and we have Henry that are going out to this dinner and Monica was to go on and say all these secret words to have David fall in love with Monica. So Monica is to go on and find David a friend, a, uh, a bear named Teddy, who is to be this kind of super toy. And so it seemed that uh, since Martin, I guess, was, like, losing interest in Teddy, that, I guess, Monica realized, like, well, hey, let's just kind of give this, uh, this Teddy off to, to David and just kind of have them be, like, companions to one another. So, they go on and they go to this dinner and they come back home and so... David at one point is kind of messing with the phone, uh, like showcasing that he can go on and be this kind of like speaker through his mouth uh, for this phone. And so Monica is to hear Henry's voice. And Henry's like, well, hey, pick up the phone. Like, hey, what's going on? So... Monica picks up the phone and she's to hear the this amazing news that it seems that Martin is to have the ability to come back to them, uh, back to this family. So we have Martin come back and we have Martin who is kind of plotting and planning a way to really just have Martin like really just drive a wedge uh, between David and his parents. So like at first we have Martin uh, who of course is to have his mother read uh, at some point Pinocchio, which is to want to have a toy become a real boy. And so now all of a sudden David is to have this story about the blue fairy and he's like, well, like maybe at some point, like maybe I can be become a real boy, kind of naive, but still. So, and, and maybe David is to think that possibly being a real boy could really make Monica love, uh, love him even more so. So, but we have Martin, we have David and like they're battling consistently because it's kind of like sibling rivalry rivalry even though like again david isn't a real boy supposedly so we have kind of david who is to kind of like simulate that he's eating food uh and to kind of play around and at one point we had Monica, who is kind of doing something, uh, like kind of slurping something up, uh, like spaghetti or something like that. And David just like busts out laughing. And that all of a sudden leads to like the parents just start busting out laughing just because like, what? <laughs> like, like he just started laughing and we just started laughing a lot. We just like, I don't know, but it's like, hey, this is funny. Uh, so we... then have it where like Monica is just kind of eating this food and so Martin is going and consistently shoving food into his mouth and he's like mm -hmm. <laughs> with this food still in his mouth he's like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so 
all of a sudden David and Martin are having this food eating contest and Teddy is trying to tell David it's like hey don't eat this you'll break so David decides to uh, not listen to Teddy and so David starts to consume mass amounts of spinach and it's like blah, 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 blah. as David and Martin are continuing to play this game all of a sudden we start to see David's face just starting to like slug to the side and so the guys are coming through and maintenance cleaning David's body and telling him it's like well hey like you can't eat food like you can't like it'll hurt you so we have a moment where David and uh David is at this party and I believe it's Martin's birthday party so and David is or and Martin is to ask David like well hey like do you have a birthday and david's like well no like we don't like i don't celebrate that kind of thing and martin's like well what was the day that you were like built and david's like well i don't really know so i guess david is to really not have a birthday so i guess this is martin's birthday and they're at this pool together and so we have one of the kids who's to like be so amazed about this bot and how lifelike it is. And so we have one moment where one of the kids is to realize that, well, well, like I think David has these like pain receptors. So like, let's go on and like take this knife and see how far we can poke into uh, David's arm to see when it actually hurts. So we have this blade that starts getting that starts to poke into David. David freaks out and grabs Martin and shoves him into the pool with David. And we almost have it to where there might be a possibility that uh, Martin may drown. So they pull away Martin from David and Luckily, they pull him, I guess, in the nick of time because Martin is still alive. So, Martin and David, the, the stories continue. So, we have Martin that is at one point telling David, it's like, well, hey, like, can you make a promise? And David's like, sure, like, tell me what it is that you need me to promise and, I'll, and then I'll do it. So Martin is to concoct this plan to have David come in during the night to cut a lock of Monica's hair to really showcase how much uh, David loves Monica and that after David is to go and cut uh, this hair that Martin will say that he loves David also. So David goes on at night to cut this piece of hair and it seems that Monica is to just kind of move while uh, like not realizing there's a there's a thing of scissors right in front of her. So Monica wakes up and is, is to possibly realize that there might be a cut in her eye. So she's kind of going to the doctor and kind of checking things out. And so therein lies some like suspicion that David may be dangerous, even though like really we saw David being dangerous with Martin sometime before the whole drowning incident. So Monica is to go on and uh eventually see that david has all these like these notes and really at this point we just finally have monica who's deciding like you know what like i think it's time for like david to go away so david is uh to go with monica on this trip and Monica is tempted to take David to these cryogenic people to just kill him off, sadly. So 
instead monica is just to take david to this forest somewhere and monica tells david to stay here of course with teddy and she tells him to stay there forever to never leave so monica then leaves and so david and teddy are just kind of left here so all of a sudden like now we have to go on and show another part of this story so jude law's gigolo joe so gigolo joe is to go on and be this romance bot let's just say uh to conveniently try to avoid things um for certain women so it seems that joe is uh probably a lot better at this than probably uh, or maybe just uh we just have a bot that's really good at selling so we of course have gigolo joe and uh wait a minute the guy, uh, one of the guys who evidently plays uh, the super nerd in this movie is also in Big Bang Theory. Wow, that's kind of interesting. Um, and we also have Gigolo Jane. Oh, what a goofy. Um, so, we have, of course, Gigolo Joe that is have this woman that this is her like first time ever like maybe she's never been with a man before like i don't know if they've gone on and really like say that but like it seems like this girl is to kind of question everything with joe to just kind of question about like well hey what's really down there like hey let me see what it is uh before you do anything and Joe goes on and he's just like, well, like, like, I, I get it completely that, it, that this is your first time with a man like me, but I'm going to tell you that, like, I'm going to make it so that, uh, like, you'll never want anybody else. You'll never want for anybody else besides me. So, and we just have, like, G uh, Gigolo Joe just kind of cricking his uh, neck and all of a sudden this music starts to play and this girl is just kind of won over by like this music and just kind of like so joe kind of goes in and is to just win this girl over uh for another satisfied customer so gigolo joe is talking with gigolo jane and just kind of like uh like just kind of having like normal like conversation about how are things going and stuff like that so Joe is to have a, another client, uh, so he's going to go on to the next girl. Uh, Gigolo Joe, of course, was to have this kind of very dark black hair. And then when uh, Joe here is to go to his next client, he is to change his hair blonde and is to uh, just kind of go on there and... So all of a sudden we find out that his client is already in this bed uh, with, of course, no clothes on. And so Joe is like, oh, it's like it's it seems like it's been a while since we've both been together. And so as Joe is trying to comfort this girl, he realizes that she is crying because he is to kind of touch on something that feels like tears, but actually it's blood. So we find out that this woman had been murdered and the murderer is still technically in the room and the murderer is to be her own husband because i guess she was to have an affair with a robot of all things so all of a sudden we have gigolo joe realize that he could be in some trouble here with him being uh possibly uh, connected somehow or another to this murder and that might lead to him like being deactivated or whatever while also gigolo joe was making it to this other 
kind of a, a hotel place. We had this owner that was saying like, well, hey, you should go on and flash your ID uh, to a number of men to like have it be that they like uh, that they know that you're like you're kind of like a worker guy and like you should be fine. So Joe was like, oh, well, thanks for that. So after that had happened, Joe decides to kind of like cut his ID thing out. And then he decides to go off into this forest uh, to meet with a number of other uh, kind of uh, robots that are just kind of uh, picking through this junk to find spare parts or to find like better pieces, like better jaws, better hands, uh, so on and so forth. Just kind of like little things here and there to kind of add uh, to their kind of falling apart uh, mechanics. So David is to go on and eventually find a number of these people as he, of course, is walking along. So at some point, we have this moon uh, that we find out is not actually the moon. It actually is to be some kind of like a uh, hot air looking balloon uh, that just looks like the moon. Because we have a number of guys who are tied to... Uh, this place called the Flesh Fair. And this Flesh Fair is to go on with Lord John Johnson Johnson to tear robots apart. And then to go on and like say things about certain robots or to kind of point out like what is the, uh, the real like... Uh, thing for them to just like really hate on robots and hate what they have gone on and done uh, to have people in desperate need to uh, like need this kind of uh, uh, mechanical comfort if I can go on and say that so we also have uh, Chris Rock as one of the uh, cannon, cannon characters that he ends up getting shoved into this cannon. And we have like Chris Rock mentioning that uh, like that he wants to kind of be like presented in a certain way or like uh, something. Or so Chris Rock ends up getting shot out of the cannon and like I didn't go on and immediately want to like watch this movie because Chris Rock was in it. I didn't even realize it until I watched this film. I'm like, oh yeah, like he does do a voice in this film. Interestingly enough. So at one point we had Teddy who had separated from uh, from David because we had Teddy that was holding on to David's uh, hand and Teddy's mentioning it's like, well, hey, like I'm probably gonna, f I'm probably gonna fall and I'm probably gonna break. So we, I'm gonna have to probably pause here for one second. I'll be right back. All right. So we're at this flesh fair, and so David is to be in the cage. One actual kid is to notice that David is in this cage. And so we have this kid who is his father is like a stage manager. And so the stage manager goes on and is to be like, well, wait, that can't like, that can't be like true that this kid, of course, was taken because uh, we had, of course, uh, Doctor or Doctor, uh, Lord Johnson Johnson go on and uh, pick up uh, a couple from where he was 
then there was a bunch of like biker guys that were to have like i think they were to be called the hounds that have these kind of like more motorcycle uh kind of things about them that i thought were like really cool looked very like tron esh uh that gone on and like were to be the ground floor to kind of pick up pick off a lot of these robots so <clears throat> The stage manager is to go on and call David over and he's like, wow, like I've never seen like something like this before because the stage manager is to go on and scan an x-ray and like show to us that like, okay, they're like the stage manager is going to x-ray and like see, of course, through david's body and so the stage manager is like wait a minute like this thing is so unique like i don't think we can really destroy it and so lord johnson johnson's like no like we have to destroy it because it's unique so we of course have the fem uh the the fem bot nanny that ends up getting acid or the fem mecha nanny i'm sorry who ends up getting acid being poured all poured over her and she smiles while it's happening and so there is so much carnage going on and you would think there that this would be a sad moment but we have a bunch of robots that don't know the difference so and we have some robots that are just kind of mentioning uh like uh the the year that they were made and like how like for their time like they were like really cutting edge and stuff like that but now like really they're just like saying how important they were but now like it's like hey guy like you've you've gotten like you've gotten replaced so sadly enough so now David is to go up there, of course, with Gigolo Joe, because Joe is to, like, be holding hands with David, and David won't let go, so they're both going up there together. So, we have Lord Johnson Johnson going up there and having this whole speech, talking about this kid, and really just the the manipulation of the brainwashing that is to go on and just have this kid uh being sold to people and so we have this kid that's begging for his life and we have somebody in the crowd that's like well, wait a minute like i've never had a bot once before ever like beg for his life this is new like I don't know, maybe this is a kid, yeah, maybe this is a kid, yeah, I think it's a kid, yeah, me too, yeah. So, all of a sudden we have Lord Johnson Johnson, that's like, well, like, that's, that's just its thing, it's trying to convince you, like, it's, it's really a robot, like, we tested it and whatever, and, like, believe me, like, it can put on a good show, but, like, like, yeah, like, that's all it is. It's light and clockwork. So, everybody's just believing that this kid is a real kid as it's begging for its life. And like, oh, don't kill me, and so on and so forth. And like, no, like, this is a kid, and we can't do this. So, everybody's, like, rushing the stage, and they're like, we're going to protect this kid. And we realize that, like, uh, the stage manager is like, hey, we got to get the heck out of here. we got to scramble and go on. And so... Now we just get it where everybody is just like scrambling out of here. Everybody's to go on and figure out where they're heading next. And so really uh, both David and, and both uh, Joe are trying to figure out what, where they're going next as well as kind of Teddy is along for the ride. So we of course have David that is to mention to Joe about uh, this blue fairy and that 
uh, we're ha we're having David wanting to like, where do you think that we can find a blue fairy? And Joe is like, well, like, Rue City has a ton of girls in it. Like, if anybody, if we can find anybody, we can probably find them there. And so, like, really just David is like, okay, I think that's a, that's a pretty good idea. So, because, like, we also have David who's, like, asking, like, really where exactly we can find like the the blue fairy not just like any woman and so joe is just like well we could probably also ask like dr no because if anybody is to like be able to help us try to figure all this out then it's obviously got to be him so we can ask him a couple of questions when we get there so joe and david eventually hitch a ride from a bunch of teens because Joe, of course, is to sell them on Rouge City and how it seems like there is a plethora of uh, decent gals there. So, but the teens want to kind of be convinced that it's going to be worth their while. So, we go on and we have Joe selling them on Rouge City and they're like, heck yeah, let's head there. So, we have this funny moment where we have this uh this building or this uh this kind of tunnel where it has this like this mouth that you go into it and so all the guys are all saying like hey we all have to say ah while we're going through uh this tunnel that looks like a mouth and so they're like oh <laughs> so they all go through root city and we're just kind of seeing a number of like like this is to be like a futuristic red light district uh, which just looks crazy. So, and there's so many jokes to be had here uh, with uh, the buildings being constructed uh, to really look like female uh, females or female parts or something like that. It, there's a lot of jokes uh, kind of going on with these buildings, with these structures. So, you would never think a, a futuristic world would allow these kind of buildings to be done because... For how we kind of really like censor ourselves or are to try to be this like clean cut image or whatever. It's kind of interesting to see like these buildings that are presented this way. So David is to go on and find this one building uh, that it seems that the possible blue fairy is to be this kind of like religious place and we of course have david is like well no i don't think so because it seems that david is to make his way to this like church and so joe is like well yeah like i've gone on and 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 met quite a few women uh, after they are to leave this place and so david is like well let's go on and let's let's talk to dr no and Joe is like, well, yeah, let's go on. Let's go on and do that. So David and Joe are going to Dr. No. So Dr. No, we find out is Robin Williams in this movie. If we haven't had Robin Williams go on and do like a cluster of like voice uh, stuff uh, for films, like we have him do that in this movie also. So they have to go on and pick certain categories specifically and so at some point we have Joe and we have David uh, trying to consistently put the pieces together to come up with the right question about the Blue Fairy and how like there could be like the Blue, f blue Fairy, you have to kind of mix uh, both fairy tale and, and fact uh, to try to see like where these people can go on and really find this Blue Fairy. So we have the connection where Joe and David are to get this whole long uh, kind of like Star Wars crawl of this poem, which is to lead them 
uh, to the end of the world uh, to go on and meet with Professor Hobby. So... We have Joe, and we have uh, David, and so Joe is to tell us that the end of the world is in Manhattan, and so it seems that when both Joe and David are to leave this environment, we have it where Joe is almost going to get arrested. And David decides that he finds this helicopter, and so he commandeers it, and then Joe all of a sudden is to jump into the driver's seat and start driving away with this helicopter, this kind of futuristic-looking helicopter. So we have Joe and we have David who easily are able to, like, there's no cops after him, nobody's, like, chasing after him for whatever reason. So I guess anybody can just go on and steal, like, a, a police helicopter and nobody's bothered. So, Joe and David are to make it to this Manhattan building. And so when David is to start walking through this building... He all of a sudden is to meet a David like him, like where like David is to be like the, the rough draft of where this David actually was to have all these like white clothes on and just to mention like, oh, yeah, like I'm the like, I guess I'm the like, I guess I'm David. So all of a sudden we have David who's being very jealous of this other David and he's like no like I want to be the only David and so David goes on and is to take this lamp and is beating this other David to death and kills it so all of a sudden we have Professor Hobby like coming out of the shadows and really he's impressed by this David because it seems that this David has gone on and been the prototype of all of these other Davids and that this David has gone on and done so much more than any of the others. So Professor Hobby is to take David into a room where all of a sudden David is to see this assembly line of all these other Davids to kind of see like these shells and these things and like and stuff like that. And so David isn't going to destroy all these other Davids that are just kind of in this assembly line. But, like, I guess he's to realize that he eventually will, like, become obsolete in that event. That at some point there's going to be a number of other Davids that are just kind of walking and talking around. So. We. Have David who's going to come to uh, Professor Hoppy to Pobby to want to become a real person, to want to become a real boy. And Professor Hobby used to tell David that it's like, well, like, that's not really possible. If anything, we really just went on and like inserted some information into Professor No so we could get you here. And we uh, really were trying to ma like manipulate you to get you back so we can kind of um, kind of see how you've like progressed. So we have David realize that this is really just a mistake, that he's not going to get any answers. And of course, David is still desperately looking for the Blue Fairy. So... David is to go on and like he is just kind of off uh, to the side of this building. And so David decides to just kerplunk into this water and starts to sink. All of a sudden, David is to see something and we have a Gigolo Joe that goes on and is to retrieve David. 
and brings him back to the surface to where we have uh, a number of these cops going on and uh, uh, magnet, magnetly uh, take Gigolo Joe and we have Joe telling David it's like well remember me like how I was and how I am and so Joe gets taken and I'm assuming he ends up getting like scrapped he ends up getting killed so we have David that is uh, to decide that he had gone on and seen something while in that water and he wants to go back in to discover it. So David is to notice that there was this Pinocchio, uh, this kind of Pinocchio uh, like section where David was to see all these little uh, kind of statues made of like Pinocchio characters. And so David was to continue on to try to go through here, sift through here. And he all of a sudden is to see the Blue Fairy. And so David is now talking to the Blue Fairy and consistently telling her, it's like, make me a real boy, make me a real boy. David is consistently wishing to this blue fairy and staying there until the blue fairy is to is to grant his wish. But of course, this blue fairy is just some clay statue of sorts. So David is to stay down there until this fairy is to grant his wish. And Ted is to be along there for the ride. And so we have this like helicopter that eventually loses its floodlights. And so, and it also seems that this ice is to, or this water is to freeze over. And 2,000 years has gone by. So we have David that is to be awoken by these aliens of sort. And so these aliens are to go on and want to question David to get some assessment of humanity to see like what humanity was really like. So they go through and they touch David and they download David's memories. They download... Uh, everything that David is to remember. So all of a sudden we have the aliens that are to try to recreate David's uh, David's home that he was with Monica in. And so now the aliens are wanting to please David in a way that is like reasonable for the aliens to be able to accommodate what David wants. So David is to get up and he is to see like the blue fairy. And this time around, like the blue fairy seems to really talk to David and is to go on and uh, like want to really grant David's wish. And so David wants more than anything to have like Monica back or to be real boy. And it seems that those things may be tough to grant David this. So because really they need like DNA samples to be able to bring someone back. And Teddy is to mention David that when David was to go on and cut uh, some of Monica's hair, Teddy was to actually keep it. So now Teddy gives David this lock of hair. And so like now can you go on and bring this girl back to life? So 
the aliens are like, hey, do whatever he wants. Make make him happy. Like we that's all we really want is to have him just be happy. So one of the aliens kind of sits him down and just is to tell him the truth. That they can go on and bring Monica back to David. But it's only going to be for 24 hours. And this person is going to, to die. Because they can't bring this person back. And like have it stick. Have it last long. So... Really, they're just kind of saying it's like, well, this is going to make David happy, but like it's going to be a temporary thing. And we have like this being an artificial life form that can last forever. So. David is like, I don't care, like just kind of bring this girl back, like if you can't make me human, then like just bring this girl back. So for 24 hours. We have both Monica and we have both uh, David together. So David and Monica are going on and doing a number of things. David is having all these paintings of his whole adventure. And David is to try to not uh, put too much pressure on Monica to remember any number of things like David is just explaining uh, some of the stuff that happened to him before he got here. So like explaining certain characters like uh, like uh, Dr. No or explaining Gigolo Joe. Um, <laughs> we had the one funny moment where like Gigolo Joe was in this puddle and he was just kind of uh, kind of like uh, doing a little tap dance or a little shimmy. Um, and so David was asking Joe, it's like, well, why do you do that? And Joe's like, because that's what I do. So so we have David that is having fun with Monica, hiding out in some room, and Teddy's like going on like, hey, where are they at? So all of a sudden Teddy's like shimmying uh, to try to figure out where they're at. He opens this door and like both of them like scare the crap out of him. And so Teddy falls over. He's like, whoa, <laughs> he got scared. Uh, and then they go on and Monica is to make uh, David a cake. Be so that way they can celebrate his birthday. So we go on and we just do everything and we just bang all this out and have a really a really great day and then monica or monica uh yeah i think i'm saying that right monica goes on and is to fall asleep and so david is decided well since this girl is to fall asleep and there's probably not never going to be an ability for me to get a much more refined Monica or uh, like eventually have this go on forever. So David decides that he's going to go on and he's going to sleep also until Monica wakes. And so David sleeps and he dreams. And so that's kind of the way the movie just kind of finishes up with uh, David having this possibly happy ending so much so that he dreams about it. So with that said, I hope that I've covered everything, but I kind of really rushed through a lot of this and I didn't get like the hefty amount of details, but I feel like most of this is just good enough uh, at the end of the day. So let me know in the comments below how you felt about artificial intelligence. Let me know uh, anything because I'm sure a lot of people might go on and eventually just be like, well, like, uh details about this details about that and like that's okay because at the end of the day uh this is just another movie to review so thank you for watching this thank you for being a part of this some way or another i really do appreciate it so i'm going to go out of my way to just get out of here uh, because i am kind of feeling this thing called tired so with that said uh yeah uh goodbye everybody bye everybody